Hi, this is Malika Chopra, founder of Intent.com, and I'm really excited today to speak to Dr. Shafali Saberi um, about what it means to live with intent. Um, Shafali, I've been such a big fan of yours for many, many years, and um, I'm a big fan, of course, of The Conscious Parent, which was a book you shared with me early on, so welcome. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you. So, you know, I know you've been now on Oprah. I was watching your TEDx talk, and I'm so impressed with your message. But a lot of what I found you're saying is that um, our role as parents um, is to be on a journey with our children of self-exploration. And it's interesting you put it that way because I grew up in a world of self-help, you know, with my father, but I never felt that... I really was part of that world, but when I became pregnant for the first time, I started asking myself questions like, who am I and what do I want and what do I want to share with them? So can you talk a little bit about kind of your philosophy of parenting? Yeah, sure. So much aligned with what you do in your work with intention, um, the crux of conscious parenting and my message is that we need to take away the focus on the other, whether it's our spouse, but well, in my message, it's our children, and turn that spotlight toward the inner self and focus on the inner evolution because that's where the greatest impact for change and the greatest onus for change really needs to be. So it's really flipping the parenting paradigm away from fixing the child and seeing the child as kind of... Uh, at uh, fault or with flaws, and mm-hmm. really asking the parent um, to question and introspect what is it that they are bringing to the dynamic and how is it that they may grow through their relationship with their children. And you, like I was watching your TEDx talk, and one of the statistics you put up there was that U.S. kids are second unhappiest in the world. And, you know, yeah. it's amazing to me that we live, you know, in a country with so much affluence and opportunity, and yet there is a sense of unhappiness. So as parents, you know, how can we help our children with that? Yeah, I mean, it's great that you brought that point up because affluence and luxury and privilege doesn't necessarily correlate with the sturdy sense of inner growth or expansion or quote-unquote happiness, you know, no one really knows what that really even means. We we flip that word around so, um, you know, buoyantly, but we don't really know what that means. So in, in my experience as a clinical psychologist, I have found that it's that inner resilience, you know. So as a parent, we need to kind of hold the intention to make sturdy that inner resilience in our children And that really comes from our children being authentic and Mm -hmm. allowing them to have the space to have their own voice without uh, carrying the burden of our projections, which is really what traditional parenting just kind of does willy-nilly. You know, we're just projecting all over the map onto our children. But when we do that, we miss this important element of inner awareness, inner authenticity, inner growth, and that that should be the focus of parenting, not whether they get to Yale or Harvard, and not whether they get A grades. That is great, but that would be like one finger on the hand of life, and the the other four fingers are all about inner literacy, emotional awareness, uh, inner connectivity, translating feelings into action, you know, translating intent into into manifested growth. How do you do that? How do you teach your children that? But we get so caught up in the flurry of life that. You know, even we are caught up in the maelstrom of egoic activities that we forget that this is what really builds resilience. And that study showed that, that it doesn't matter how affluent one is, if the if the sense of worth is absent, then no amount of luxury is going to replace that. In fact, luxury is going to kind of hijack that because the kid is going to feel so unworthy yeah. of that affluence and status. Yeah. You know, I when I wrote my first book, A Hundred Promises to My Baby, it was very much motivated by thinking about my intent as a mom um, and sharing stories. But some of the things that I really learned from that um, thought process was we teach our children by example, not just words. 
Um, you know, yeah. I learned how to meditate when I was nine, but my parents never forced us to meditate. Rather, we saw them meditate, and then we right. saw kind of what balance and happiness that gave our entire family. So we wanted to follow by words. I mean, followed by their example. Um, and then in the last year when I was writing my new book, Living with Intent, um, and the subtitle is My Somewhat Messy Journey to Purpose, Peace, and Joy, um, mm-hmm. I realized in that messy journey that so many of my own, um, whether it's my addiction to sugar or the emotional needs that I have, I'm passing on to my children. Um, and so part of the journey for me was, it really is a, a journey of the self um, to serve them in the best manner. So do you have specific tips you talk to your patients about or write about in your books? Oh, yeah. And I love what, you know, the analogy you gave. And I, I often speak of, you know, if we don't shine our inner diamond, then we cannot expect our children to, you know, shine and, and give us glory. You know, the, the radiation of that glory comes from within. And what I teach people is that, of course, first we have to become aware. First we have to be even willing to look within and then become aware of the projection as it's happening in the moment, which is so painful and people feel so guilty and ashamed and and that's another side of the ego that they have to then grapple with. And then, you know, like you said, unless you clean up the clutter in your inner landscape, it doesn't matter what you're telling your kids. If you're eating pizza at 12 o'clock at night, they're going to know it, you know. So it's yeah. how you embody, and and that's why I love your your term term intent because people mistake intent to be passive, but I know you don't mean it that way. Intent yeah. is full of act activity. It's full of action. Absolutely. It's full of embodiment. And you know, but people think, oh, but my intention was good, or I intend. But no, that's passive states of dependency and you know waiting in the wings. But you mean it in a very active, virile you know, masculine with feminine energy sort of way, dynamic. And I think that's what we miss in the parenting process. We think that, you know, we have children and we're going to produce them and they better fall into line. And we miss the whole piece of, oh, my goodness, I have to do so much work to radiate with the message that I'm passing on verbally. I have to actually, you know, it has to expand through my pores. And that takes a lot of work, right? I can't tell my kid to play the piano if I'm not willing to play an instrument myself. It has to be that deep level of engagement uh, and embodiment that parents are not willing to to do and then they wonder why their children are not up to par. Absolutely. And I love, I appreciate that you brought up the point about action because absolutely intent um, is all about action. Um, In the book, I kind of used an acronym around I-N-T-E-N-T, which was incubate, notice, trust, express, nurture, but T is for take action because without kind of that momentum, we're yeah. not embracing um, these intents in our life. So, um, Shafali, one last question. I saw that you have, um, is it an organization called the Global Inner Disarmament? Um, and I'm yes, well, I'm what working that is. on, well, I'm just, you know, that's the grand vision of, yes creating a community that understands that there's nothing really to disarm on the external level. You know, you can take away all the guns, you can take away all the ammunition, all the vitriolic speech, anything on the manifested level, but if you don't really disarm on the truly deeply internal mental level, um, you know, it's going to fall apart. All efforts for peace will fall apart and true peace, just like your message says, starts from within and understanding how radical that approach needs to be and how it needs to be embodied in all the education systems and colleges. I mean, that needs to be of primary importance, and yet it's treated as if that's kind of like, you know, when we have extra money, we'll do it, and when we have extra time, we'll do it. But that's really the the central piece of of humanity, and we're kind of missing it in a way. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for your incredible work, Um, and I encourage everyone to look for uh, Dr. Shafali's books, The Conscious Parent and Out of Control. Um, And again, thank you. You are an example for me of living with intent, and I feel so honored to be connected. Oh, same here. It's so mutual and reflected back. So much luck on your new book, and we are here to support you in any way we can. Thank you.